Takashi Murakami was born the year 1962 in Tokyo, Japan, to a housewife mother and a taxi working father and a brother. Growing up, Takashi had many different influences, but the main one was family. As you can see in this picture, all of them are really close. Takashi's parents always took him to the art museum in the weekends. One of the most memorable art to Takashi was Saturn Devouring His Son, an art by Francisco Goyas. He describes his experience as terrifying and emotional. However, he loved the fact that the painting evoked this emotional side of him. In addition to Takashi's parents, the environment that he lived in also influenced him a lot. During his youth, Japan was going through a lot of growth. Many Western paintings were being brought into the country and going to exhibition had become a very way, popular way to pass the time. Beside his parents and environment, anime had a big influence in Takashi's life. One of them is Ultraman, a mecha anime that is famous in the 70s. He said, I believe this experience have a lot to do with how I make my films and animation alongside with painting and sculpture. In seventh grade, Takashi would be involved in a big accident where he couldn't go to school and would fall behind in grades. In that time, Takashi uses anime and manga as an escape from the world and get to the point of obsession. And there are many mangas and anime which influenced him later on. When his senior year came by, Takashi realized that it would be impossible for him to go to college, no matter what career he tried. However, there was one career path that didn't need any big requirements, and that would be art school. So throughout the senior year, Takashi just focused on art. Once in art school, Takashi quickly realized that, that the traditional art teachings of the schooling is not for him. The traditional arts are called Nihonga. It focuses mainly on scenery. The search for his own style would lead him to something new. That was the exhibition work of Shinro Otaka. As he said, I felt as though I was hit in my head by a hammer. I began obsessing with the question, what is contemporary art? I decided that I had no choice but to go to New York and, and visit the Museum of Modern Art. One of the biggest influences in New York that Takashi had was by the painting Oris and Ant Isis. Overall, the move to New York was a shift that Takashi needed to create his growth and to find his own painting style. To find his own style, Takashi blended Nihonga, which was an art style that he learned in the school of Trouss of the traditional Western idea of high arts, versus the low arts, so he coined it the monumental term of super flat, initially used to describe his unique artistic style of bizarre contemporary art. In 2003, Takashi Murakami would catch his lightning in a bottle moment in which he would work with one of the most known brands in high fashion. That was Louis Vuitton. This collab led him to being a star among stars. With the stardom came a lot of criticism on his work. In addition to finding his style, Takashi also started creating alter egos for himself in the drawings. He made Mr. Dope. The character portrays a sharp toothed yet playful character whose name derives from the Japanese slang of Dobochiti. Or why? This question Murakami dissenting a view of consumer society and a lifeless impotence. In addition to Mr. Dope, most of Takashi Murakami's work tend to have a darker truth, in which they explore post-war Japan, the consumer culture, the loose deep bone feelings of prevalent characters of animation culture. This specific one, Murakami's personal anxiety regarding the expanding development of nuclear power is explored. This next picture is called My Lonesome Cowboy. This is a sculpture, one of the most expensive gold sculptures that Takashi Murakami has made. The painting is an example of what super flat art and art movement founded by Murakami looks like in the 1990s that criticizes the consumer culture of Japan. This is the album cover that Takashi Murakami did for Kanye West's fifth album, Graduation. The album went on to break many records and Takashi's involvement on this album cover and the animation for Good Morning became one of the most iconic rap moments. 
In 2011, the devastating earthquake had a big effect on everyone in Japan and out of Japan. When it comes to Tsukashi, it led him to examine where religion and art arises where people are faced with natural disaster. It led him to focus on art that is more religious questioning. Even though Takashi Murakami is loved by many, his unique take on contemporary art comes with both love and hate. Most art critics that hate on Takashi tend to say that he's a sellout to the traditional way of art, and that he makes consumable art. In 2001, the Hiroshima factory evolved into Kai Kai Company, which was under Takashi Murakami. Besides producing Takashi Murakami's work, the company also promotes new artists and organizes collaborative projects. Here are some of the artists they collaborated with. And they also worked on animated films and videos. Mirakami had a big influence in the general pop culture and anime. However, Mirakami's influence on contemporary art perception is evident. He dismantled and prompted pop art in a way American critics and artists have not anticipated, in a new way, in a new light. So what can we learn from Takashi? One main thing is that Takashi's work collectively embodied what is it to be oneself. Takashi's art demonstrated how high art and low art may end up coexisting and even melt to create something unique. Lastly, thank you for your time.